Hi again. Uh, this is a promotional video, so to speak, uh, for my course Applied Statistics offered in the fall semester. The course is for beginners and uh, it focuses mainly on applications. Uh, you can check the syllabus here. Okay, you can check the syllabus here. And uh, also uh, the lecture notes. You can check it. Check the lecture notes. Check them here. Right here. Um, one caveat or caveat, depending on <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, who who you are asking, <laughs> who who you are. I guess there are there are like four different varieties of uh, pronunciation for cavi caveat and caveat and, and so on. Anyway, one, one caveat is that uh, the, le the lecture notes also serve as a self-study guide for the students in my science classes. Uh, so uh, there are quite a few advanced and mathematically sophisticated materials uh, also included in the lecture notes. But uh, rest assured that only the basics are covered in this course which comprise about 20% of the lecture notes. As I said, uh, this is a promo and uh, you should refer to the online syllabus and the lecture notes for the detail. Um, let's get started without further ado. Um, today, uh, good and affordable software packages are available for most stat statistical analysis. However, Garbage in, garbage out, you know, that anecdote still holds and it's essential to choose the right method for your data. Uh, here are three concrete examples. Example one, raw test scores should not be used to avoid a wrong and misleading conclusion. Instead, we should uh, pre-treat the data to rescale the scores. Uh, this is because statistical procedures are based on mathematics and they implicitly assume that a one-point differential is equally significant over the entire score range, whether it is between 0 and 1 or 99 and 100. Uh, this basic premise is clearly visible in the mathematical equality 100 minus 99 equals 2 minus 1, which is equal to 1. <laughs> if you are mystified, I can, I can put it differently. Uh, for test scores, this equality, 100 minus 99 equals 2 minus 1 equals 1, this equality means raising your score from 0 to 1 is as difficult as going from 99 to 100, which is not necessarily true. You know, think of raising your score from 0 to 10, compare that with raising your score from 90 to 100, a perfect score. Um, they, they may not be, you know, they, they may not be at the uh, same level of difficulty. Levels of difficulty may be different. Hence, we need to pre-treat the data and rescale the scores. Example 2 big data right big data the famous big data uh, big data are fad fad means very fashionable a very fa it's uh, big data are very fashionable now but you only need about 1000 data points for a typical analysis for example the gallup organization the famous gallup in the united states usually polls fewer than 2000 people even though there are 200 million registered voters uh, proper data side spells efficiency for your investigation. As it turns out, uh, the size of the error is roughly proportional to 1 over square root of n, where n is the number of data points in the sample. Known, it's known as the sample size. Qualitatively speaking, with n equals 2,000, you are about 45 times more likely to be correct than if you only picked one data point. You know, just one, one unit uh, from the entire population. Remarkably, perhaps, these numbers do not depend on the population, but only on the sample size. So, even if you are dealing with a small city with 30,000 people, as opposed to 200 million registered voters, you still need a sample size of 20, uh, I'm sorry, 2,000. 
you know, uh, 2,000 people to be 45 times more accurate. Example number three, think of a destructive testing for the strength of the body of a car. Uh, this means you intentionally destroy a car to find out how strong its frame is. You can imagine this kind of ima imagine that this kind of strength is particularly important for the cars like sports cars that can travel at a very high speed. But who wants to destroy 2,000 Ferraris? right <laughs> for your information one model ferrari california t <laughs> that starts at 206473 dollars <laughs> as this is quite costly we want to minimize the data size while keeping the statistical error within a reasonable range this kind of uh, <coughs> masterful balancing you know, balancing between the number of cars uh, you destroy and the accuracy, you know, of your data, uh, or of your result. Uh, this kind of balancing act requires a solid background in basic statistics. I repeat, basic statistics, you see, and not advanced statistics. Furthermore, uh, even if you yourself may not be involved in actual data analysis, there will certainly be occasions, opportunities, where you need to understand other people's analysis. Here are some examples. For example, can you explain what the following expression, often found in newspapers, exactly and precisely means? The expression is a statistical error of 5%. Do you understand what it means when a weather forecaster says there is a 20% chance of precipitation? Well, whether it's going to rain or it's not going to rain, but anyway, 20%. Do you know precisely what your SAT, GRE, TOEFL or TOEFL scores, you know, what they mean, the scores mean, and how they are being computed? Can you arrive at an educated guess about the likely amount of amount you will win in the lottery lottery and make your buying decisions based on your calculation as opposed to your gut feeling <laughs> however good you may believe it is uh, do you not feel educated guesses and well calculated moves are much better than one shot in the dark after another in your life <laughs> next I also want to draw your attention to the following fact. It is not uncommon, especially in humanities and social sciences, that people use wrong statistical methods or apply the right methods in the wrong manner, nullifying their good initial judgments. You should understand the fundamentals of statistical techniques to break this sad tradition, so to speak. In my personal experience, advising those people um, pre uh, advising those people and pre-treating the data and deploying the right statistical tools in the right way for the right data alone, you know, have fixed numerous problems and unearthed, unearthed many trends and characteristics hidden in the data. Uh, so all that required is like good advising, you know, pre-treating of the data and uh, um, right method, picking the right method. Good command of basic statistics, I mean, again, basic, okay, basic statistics helps you get the most out of your hard-earned data. Knowledge of statistics goes well beyond avoiding mistakes. Why do you not go for efficiency, effectiveness, and maximum return for your invested time and effort? It is truly true that one can understand basic statistics with the same mathematical background required for SAT, uh, that is, often like through the first year in high school. You definitely do not need calculus. It is such a shame that so few students learn enough statistics, especially when that enough is so little. This class focuses on applications in order to foster sound statistical judgment. Gaining good statistical sense of direction is too easy and so rewarding not to shoot for. 
You may have found mathematics abstract, intangible, theoretical, and hence difficult. But statistics is concrete, tangible, practical, and much easier. You may have gone astray trying to conduct uh, lengthy calculations in your math classes, but you can always rely on software for cumbersome computations in statistics. Though my PhD, PhD was in pure mathematics, I do not think ordinary folks should learn pure mathematics at the college level at all. However, I strongly feel that knowledge of basic statistics at the level of this course is essential for any college graduate, irrespective of the field of specialization. That's it. See you later.